Welcome back to Bite Size Booksmith. My name is Angie, and today we are going to be taking a look at Claude 3. Uh, out of the blue yesterday, one of my friends sent me a message and said, hey, did you see this? And it was this article here from Anthropic announcing the Claude 3 family. So let's just really quickly glance through this. There are three different models, three different LLMs within the Claude 3 family. There is Haiku, which is not available yet. There is Claude 3 Sonnet, which if you're using Claude's website, their chat website for free, you actually have access to Claude 3 Sonnet. And then there's also Claude 3 Opus, which is supposed to be their biggest, baddest in a good way, model. And it's supposed to be better if you scroll through this article, it's supposed to be better than ChatGPT. Now, if you have Claude Pro for chat, you're actually able to use Opus. It's supposed to be super fast. We also have the ability to use uh, vision capabilities. So the Claude 3 models are supposed to be able to look at photos and charts and graphs and diagrams to be able to answer questions. We're supposed to see fewer refusals which is great for us because I don't know if you remember, but Claude 2.1 refused to write fiction. It just, it wouldn't do it. So here we go. Imp improved accuracy, answering questions, long contact. So let's go ahead and get down here to the pricing. We've got the cost for Opus is, it's pretty spendy. I think there's only one model that's a little bit more pricey. Look at this contacts window. That's 200,000 tokens. That's 170,000 words if you go by the 70% rule. So normally when I calculate words from tokens, I say 70% of those tokens is words. And so that's 170,000. You can go ahead and look here about potential uses. Sonnet. So we're looking at three for input, 15 for output. And then Haiku, again, not available just yet, but 25 cents for input and 125 for output. Now, this is per million tokens. So let's see what it looks like compared to some of the other models. Okay, here we are in a spreadsheet that I created a little while back to gauge the different pricing in the different models. And I went ahead and I updated it to add the new Claude versions. And so we can see here, and I'll give you a, guys a copy of this. I put the price per million because that's how it's presented to us in all of the Open Router website, on Anthropic's website, on OpenAI's website. They always say price per million, but what does that look like? It's price per thousand. So I went ahead and, and ran the calculations for you so you can see what it looks like for you to go ahead and run a thousand words. Keep in mind that most chapters, depending on what you're writing, could be two, 3,000 words. And when you run the words the first time and you are getting to learn your story, th there's quite a bit of excess. Let's call it excess. Words that you generate that you don't ever end up using. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the prices and just something to think about. So we've got some of the unfiltered LLMs up here. We've got our Turbo 16K for 3.5. So we're looking at $3 for input, $4 for output. My friend here, Mr. Medium, 32K, 2 points, 2.7, $2.70 per million and $8.10 8 output. Here we go. Claude 3 Sonnet, 200,000. And then we've got 3 and 15. So 3 for input, 15 for output. Here's Claude 2 which that's only a hundred thousand and they've got the input is eight and the output is 24. Mr. Large that came out last week it's also 32k and the input is eight and the output is 24 and then down here is Claude Opus 200,000 uh, and then the input is 15 the output is 75. The only one that's more expensive here is the GPT 432K, which is 60 for input and 120 for output. So you're looking at per thousand words, it's going to be six cents or 12 cents. And that gets rather spendy rather quickly 
if you're writing a book. Also remember that it is filtered, meaning that if you're writing something that is against its content restrictions, it's going to get up in arms and it's going to give you a hard time about it. What I've seen from some other people who have used it so far is that it goes a little bit further than Claude 2 went. So you can get a little bit more fantasy violence, but it's still going to throw up a deny if you're trying to get too sensual with your content. Okay, folks, now we are in Novel Crafter and you'll see this is a brand new, there's nothing in here. I called it Monster Thriller because that's the prompt we're going to use. But let's come down here to prompts and let's go look. Now, if you come to general purpose, you will see that Claude 3 Opus and Claude 3 Sonnet have already been added. But let's go over how to add them if you have a cloned prompt. If you try to go to one of your not safe for work ones and try to add it. So you'll notice that Anthropic is not here at all, which means it marked as not safe for work. And it is a filtered model, so that's why it can't be added to a not safe for work prompt. So we'll come down to this one and we'll go ahead and add the models. Come down here to Claude 3 Opus. Now you'll notice there is a beta for each of these. I know that they are self moderated, but beyond that, I don't know what that means to us. I will have to do some more research into that. Here we go. Let me find. Oh, there it is, Sonnet. Add Claude 3 Sonnet. And because I don't know what's the best temperature or top P or anything like that, I'm going to leave it as is for now. And I can come back in here and I can edit it. I did check this morning in Open Router to see if they had any best practices for temperatures and such. And when I checked, they didn't have enough information to be able to provide ideal parameters for these models yet. So I'm going to go ahead and close those up and I'll actually move them to the top so I don't forget them. I'm not actually going to be using this Paranormal Romance Instant Love Developmental Editor. I probably should make one for thrillers and I will come back after I take care of that. Okay. I went ahead and copied this Instant Love Developmental Editor and I created a Thriller Developmental Editor. I didn't change any of the models or anything like that. I just came over and I edited my system message. You are an expert developmental editor with a specialization in writing character-based thrillers for adult audiences. And then I also edited the word thriller here for paranormal romance. I kept it really super simple. I just want to make sure that the LLM is understanding that we're dealing with thrillers here. Okay, come up here. I actually need to see, I'm pretty sure. Oh, here we go. So under the scene beat completion, we also have Opus and Sonnet as well. So we'll be able to go ahead and use those models once we get some beats. So first, what we're gonna do is we are going to come over here to chat and we are going to start generating a story idea. Okay, so let's come up here and go to our Thriller Developmental Editor and we are going to use Sonnet because we are going to be planning this monster thriller and I don't want to take all the money that I have in open uh, router. So <laughs> we're going to go with the cheaper one. And then we will test both once we run some beats. So let's go ahead and put in here. I'm going to put in the, this is the monster thriller prompt from thriller prompts, 50 niche AI templates from Marigold. And let's see what it does. And it does not seem to like this. So it's basically just taking everything that I put in there and it's spitting it right back out at me. So it looks like we're going to have to do this a little bit differently. Okay, so our first attempt at using Marigold's prompt for the thriller did not work. I tried a couple subsequent ways and let me tell you, 
it was a big fat fail. So I decided we're going to do something a little bit different. So I'm here in the bestseller list. I went ahead and I came to the suspense category, paranormal. So I'm in psychic suspense. I'm going to come up here to my KD spy. I'm going to pull the results all the way from 1 to 40. And as you can see here, this is actually a pretty good category if you are just getting started. There's a little bit of competition, but it's not too heavy. So let's see. Okay, so it's finished. I'm going to come up here to Insights. And I'm going to grab Key Success Factors Fiction. So let me grab this. And we will come back. Minimize that. And we will start a new chat. Let's get out of Turbo and come down here to Sonnet. Let's go ahead and put this in here. And I'm going to make a slight change to this prompt. And I, I've shared this one a couple times. Give me one second. I've got to find where I copied it in my Notion. Let's go ahead, put it here. Because I wanted to give me five book series ideas, including series, title, tropes, and series description. Let's go ahead and hit send. Again, I've got sonnet happening here. It says thriller, but we're doing suspense. It's pretty close. Okay, so now it's going to answer my questions and hopefully give us some series ideas. And then we can start going from there to come up with uh, a book idea. And this is a big reminder that not everything works on your first attempt, even if you've been doing this for quite a while. Okay, Supernaturals Anonymous. It's a supernatural support group, paranormal mystery, diverse characters, urban setting. Interesting. Mystic Manor Mysteries. Okay, we've got the ghostly gumshoes. This sounds silly. And witchy waters. This sounds a little bit like a cozy mystery. And then we've got the psychic confidential. Maggie Sinclair, a quirky small town psychic. Okay, let's. Oh, she's aided by her sassy best friend, a mischievous ghost. Okay, again, that sounds a bit cozy mystery ish. Let's go with series four. Okay, please tell me more about Mystic Manor Mysteries. Of course, we have to have a Blackwood here. It's one of those AI names that just... It's always there. We've got Emily, which Emily is definitely 100%. Oh, and we've got a quaint town named Willow Grove. Okay. So we've definitely got some AI-isms as far as naming goes. So let's go ahead and I will use some prompts that I have. I, I prefer to use Bureau Gold stuff if I'm starting from absolute scratch. Okay, here we go. So we've got our protagonist, we've got our love interest, our antagonistic force, minor characters, and then each of our minor characters has a character trope. We've got some additional story elements as well. Okay, fantastic. Let's go ahead and keep going.
Again, if you are doing this for real, for a story that you are going to publish, you're going to want to read through all of the things and make sure that it's got your ideas. Anything that's not clear, you're going to want to make sure that you clarify. And let's see here. This one has a tendency to go a little bit. Paranormal is okay. Let's get rid of that here. Just going to talk about our backstory for our main characters and about the town a little bit. And again, all of these prompts are available in Miracle's book or in a lot of her different uh, videos for AI Writers Connection. Uh, I'll make sure and post a link. Willow Grove. Not quite Willow Creek, but pretty darn close. Okay. Now this last one is quite long. So we are going, our story is a oh, 21 chapter. I'll just leave it at 21. And we are called this a psychic suspense story. We need to create a chapter by chapter outline that follows the Blake Snyder beat sheet. Okay. So you can uh, have it all from one character's point of view, or you can have it alternating. This one's alternating. I don't really want that to, to do that. So let's get rid of that. Okay. Okay. Let's say. Let's type it in here. All chapters should be from, is her name Emily? I think it's Emily. Emily's first person past tense point of view. We can get rid of that one because it's telling it to alternate between the two. Okay, and then the next thing is we've got, we want 10 beats per chapter. Great. Let's jet mystery. Absolutely. It'll make sure that we have some suspense, which is good. And then we also have our 10 numbered beats. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and send this. And just like we did last week, it gave us chapters one and two, and that's perfectly fine. So we've got chapter one, Emily Hawthorne's point of view. We've got a date and a time. We've got the characters are Emily Hawthorne, Lucas Blackwood, and Aunt Agatha, who's a ghost. And so a chill ran down my spine. I'm shocked. Okay, that's definitely an AIism right there. Okay, we're, we're going to go with this. And let's extract our scene beats. Actually, after our last video, Space Motion went in and set it up to where we could do this. So, again, I came to the bottom of the chat that has all of the scene beats in it, and I hit extract. And so we've got our hook, all of this. So these are the 20 scene beats for chapters one and two. So all you have to do is copy the scene beats. And I'm going to go ahead over here. I'm going to add a new snippet and stick them in there for right now. So 
So we can actually come back up here to these other items and we can actually extract codex entries. So we've got Hawthorne Manor, we've got Old Town Square, and we've got Ravenswood and the Thornton Estate. So this has just brief snippets of information about each of these places. And we can go ahead and see. Add tags. So this is not going to be a character. This is going to be a location. This is going to be a location. This is going to be a location. Okay, great. So we're going to go ahead and hit save entries. And if we come over to our codex, ta-da, here they are. Again, this is another thing that Space Motion worked on last week after our video uh, to ensure that these would work. Okay, so do I have... Okay, here's our characters. Go ahead and hit extract. Codex entries. So we've got... Now this didn't work quite to plan. We would have to come through here and go character by character to set those up because of the way that the main character, so Emily Hawthorne, so it's grabbing each of these items and trying to make a, a codex entry based upon them. So that didn't quite work, but let's come up here and begin. Okay, so we've got our protagonist, Emily Hawthorne. We've got, okay, so again, didn't quite work to plan, but definitely much easier than it has been in the past. Let's see if there's anything here we can extract. Series title, tropes, no. Nothing else from here. So I'm going to take a quick break and I am going to quickly make just codex entries for the people that I need for chapter one. And then we are going to go in and create some prose. What I ended up doing is I decided to come in here and just use a prompt and say, please create a story Bible entry for each of these characters. I listed out the name of the characters. Each story Bible entry should include their age, physical description, attributes, strengths, weaknesses, motivation, and how they speak. Be sure to provide this information in paragraph format. I should have been a little more specific and said, be sure to provide this information in one paragraph because I ended up with multiple paragraphs. So I went ahead. It, I wasn't unable to extract this information because there was so many paragraphs. Um, but I went ahead and I manually created our codex entries. Here they are. And then I also went ahead and I used a active story beats template that I, Miracle provided to me personally, just to ensure that my story beats had more meat to them and that they were more actionable. So I went ahead and added that. I said, for chapter one, please revive the story beats using the following template. And then I came down here and it revised chapter one. So I came over here to plan. I went ahead and created act one. I created chapter one. And then I went ahead and copied all of that information here into scene one. Now we're going to go to write. And we are going to use our first scene beat. So beat one is going to be the hook. And let's grab that pop it in here. The AI might not have enough context. Ah, I may, I skipped a couple steps. So let's come here and we're going to come to writing. Okay. It's going to be past tense. Correct. going to be first person and it's going to be from Emily Hawthorne's point of view. Now let's go back and see if this makes it happy. Okay, so that error message disappeared. So if you see that, it's just trying to tell you that, hey, you didn't tell us who is writing or who we're seeing the story unfold from. So let's come here to generate prose. 
And we're going to do the general purpose because we can't use not safe for work and I haven't created another one yet. So we're going to come here to, we'll start with Sonnet and then uh, we will try Opus as well. Uh, remember, there's very little information in our codex. We've only got just seven entries, so it's not going to be great. But let's go ahead and see what it comes up with. So we're going to do plot three sonnet. First thing I notice is there is nothing here about the sun. I like that. So I grip the handle of my suitcase tighter, the wheels crunching against the gravel path. With a deep breath, I sealed myself for the unknown and that awaited me within its imposing walls. Okay, nice. A shudder ran through me. Okay, that's a little bit different than what I'm used to. And I couldn't shake the eerie feeling that I was being watched. I inserted the old brass key and turned the tumblers grinding in protest. I like that. Okay, there we go. And the transition is supposed to be with a deep breath. I sealed myself for the unknown and that it awaited me within its imposing walls. So this actually. It didn't try to wrap it up, which I, I think is a combination of both the model and the way that the scene beat was written. Okay, fantastic. So we are going to copy this. I'll create a new sip it. And uh, I'm going to clear the beat. And let's generate using Opus. Okay. Already we can see that this is much longer. We've also got some dialogue. She's talking to herself. Okay. So here we go. We brought iron gates of the Hawthorne Manor, creaked open, and I stepped onto the winding driveway. A chill running down my spine as I approached the looming Victorian Manor, my unexpected inheritance, a new home. I don't see anything here about her steps clicking or clacking, which that's a common AIism. But the air does feel heavy with anticipation. Here we got some moss-covered gargoyles. That's a really great part there. The wind tugs at my hair. Smell a faint smell of decay and a whisper that seemed to echo from the depths of the manor itself. So this is a little, a little purple, but it's not bad. So I sealed myself for the unknown that waited me within its, its walls. Interesting. Okay. Let's go ahead and we'll run B2. Scene beats. Oh, it doesn't have any codex entries. Does Moats dance in the sun as Emily? Explorers. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. We'll just go with it and see what it does. Okay, we're going to generate prose again. Oops. Come back up here to Opus. Okay, hey, we've got our dust motes dancing in the sunbeams. Casting an eerie kaleidoscope of colors across the faded wallpaper. There's some pretty good description here. 
oh, we've got footsteps echoing off the high ceilings and the polished wood floors. I bet if we changed some of these settings, we wouldn't end up with these AI-isms. Okay, and we found ourselves a book. We always find ourselves a book. Oh, yeah, and we're supposed to. That's good. <laughs> okay, guys, it's fun learning this story. It's even better if you actually know what the story says before you start prompting. It is what it is. So I think we're going to end here for today. I definitely think that with the Opus, we got longer prose. I don't know if I would necessarily call it better. I thought that the sonnet prose was shorter, but I thought it was, for me and the way that I write, I thought it was a little bit better. I would definitely have to test a lot more and see just with how I think and how I write. Do I really like it better? Do I not? I don't know. I'd love to know if you guys have used Opus or if you've used Sonnet either on the site or here within Novel Crafter. What do you think so far? What is your feedback? Like I said, I have I had a couple of friends who've used it already. They were really impressed with Opus, but also they were really happy using Sonnet for writing their outlines and plotting. So I'm eager to hear what you guys think. I will see you guys next time and keep writing and we'll talk to you later.